Even as we're experiencing this rain, Lord, we, we uh, just want to thank you for answered prayers, Lord, regarding the weather and the rain and the fires, and we just thank you for what you were doing, and just pray that, Lord, you continue to come and bless and heal our nation. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can come and honour and worship and praise you, and today we just want to honour you, we just just bow our hearts before you, but we lift our hands and we lift our voices as we just praise and worship and honour you today. So be here present with us, Lord Jesus. We give you the honour and the praise and the glory and Holy Spirit invite you to come. Speak with us, move in us and guide us in all that we think and do and say here today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. There's a lot of fear in this town, in this country right now. Fire ravishing everywhere. There's nobody needs to know that or this, no, that needs to be said. But there's a lot of people in the world with a lot of fear. But we need to know that God God takes away our fear. God is our strength. God is our Saviour. Yeah. We're no longer slaves.
and always helpful because it has information in um, uh, a month of calendar as well as all the things that are happening. And if you ever need to get things into the newsletter, please see Sandy and she will, uh, she will make sure that your notices or information gets in the monthly newsletter.
good. Good. Oh, amen, amen. If you believe it, and if you receive it, somebody testify. Come on, I want to hear a testimony. Has anyone got a testimony of God's greatness and goodness in their life today? Yes. We were supposed to be on holidays next week, but because of the fires, um, we're supposed to be going to lakes. Um, the guy who runs the place said, don't worry about it, we'll just book you in next week. So we've lost no money. Oh, and we're going to go visit my sister instead. So. Uh, well, my door shuts another one opens in the Lord, doesn't it? Yeah. He's a great you might not see much, but we've had a bit of a, a breakthrough this past week just for the fact that the district nurse is coming to give my brother his medication morning and night. And I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I praise God for my family that they're all home, safe and sound. Yeah. They're all in Malakuta. Oh, yeah. Praise God! <laughs> He's interested in the little things in our lives. Because they're the ones that often make the most difference. Anyone else? I feel there's another, there's more, yeah. My person um, is in Buxton, outside of Captain Nick Hamiltown. Um, I went through there last week and uh, I had a few very um, uncomfortable days where I did wasn't able to contact him, didn't know what was happening. Um, finally, was able to contact him, and uh, when he, he spoke to me, um, they had 12 acres there. They've lost some of the back of their property, which is all wood there. <coughs> but uh, at one stage, they were totally surrounded by fire. The guy down the street from them has lost everything, but they're safe. <coughs> and uh, my, my son's an atheist, so I believe that the only thing that kept him safe was all the prayers for the saints. Yes. My um, niece lost her house in Sarsfield, um, and but her dad, my brother, uh, he hasn't talked to us for two years. And we've been praying that we'd, we'd be able to build bridges and so I sent him a 70th birthday card last year, no response. I sent him a message this week, last week. Um, to say, I hope you're safe because they're up above the end state and in the where the fires are. And he sent me a message last night. So, praise God. Oh, yes. Yeah, we've still got two friends at Malakuta. Two got up out in the boat. Two are still there. So, keep praying for the few yes. thousand that are still in Malakuta that need to be rescued.
You've seen miracles, but a new miracle, a new beginning is coming. Be ready, Lord, say, be ready for his coming. We never know. Be on your guard. Let go and let go. Let God be on your side. God before me, who can be against me? Let God be for me.
um, the best possible place to put those offerings to over the next couple of because things change, you know, we can react out of our heart and out of our emotion and say, you know, let's just give money here, there and everywhere, but we want to actually look and see where we can just place our bit of offering. Alright, so let's just pray, if you would like to pray, just um, keep an eye on the room and if you want to pray, stand up. Thanks Steve, we'll start off. Oh, Father, we, we do thank you Lord that people around the world have been noticing the situation and have been um, donating and giving. But Father, we want to pray that that money goes to the people where it's, where it's really needed, Lord. And, and for the resources and for the help for the firefighters and for the help for people who've lost their property and trying to look after animals on, on um, sporting ovals and goodness knows what. So Father, we, we just would pray that, um, that all of the generosity will we'll all go to the right place and there won't be anybody that will be in a situation where there's nobody that can help them, Lord. And those people who are suffering um, from loss, we just pray for your comfort on them too, Lord, and just for people to gather around. Thank you, Lord. Uh, only other bushfires, 2009. I was in the fire uh, brigade, and my face, not just me, were blackened, and the tigers of those guys I miss out who work long hours. And I just thank God that the guys, I can't do it now, but I thank God there's firefighters that give their time, leaving their families to, to be there. And I just thank God for the CFA and the fire brigade that these guys and ladies give up the time. And I just felt the presence of God there. And I just thank God we have these guys, fire brigades, emergency, the Red Cross, and all these people, Salvation Army, and the past have seen what the Salvation Army can do. And in disasters, if all has been there, and I thank God for the Salvation Army. Thank you for all those volunteers, those firefighters and emergency service people. Bless them. Father, we pray for the awakening of you in our nation, Lord. Father, I know of a young man, um, Stephen Wade, that's down there when the people come off the boat cheering you. And Lord, we pray that you will open people's hearts to receive you at this time, Lord, that they have a real encounter with you, Father. Father God, we realise that these bushfires right throughout our nation are going to leave a nasty scar, not just uh, physically, but emotionally and spiritually in so many people. And we ask for healing, for you are the healing God. We thank you, Almighty God, that you have caused people to cry out and call upon your name through these, these situations. And I thank you, God, that you have answered them. And we pray, Lord God, that it will be an opportunity for your people to reach out in love, to even to witness to people, to, to help out and do things to help other people get back on their feet. But we pray for healing, Lord God, for our nation. Amen. Father, we just pray for, um, Lord, those in authority over us. Lord, we pray for our state premiers. Lord, and we pray in particular for Scott Morrison. Yeah. Lord, and we thank you for his leadership. We thank you, Lord, for, um, for our Australian Defence Force. And we thank you for the firefighters and the CFA, Lord, the SES, and all of those um, services, Lord, that are out there. Father, we pray for supernatural leading and guidance, uh, particularly for um, Mr Morrison. And just ask, Lord, that um, you... Uh, help them, Lord, uh, to govern wisely at this time. Lord, give them insight and, Father, uh, creative inspiration, Lord, to those who are fighting the fires. And, Father, we just pray your blessing, covering and protection over them. And, uh, Father, that, uh, yeah, you would continue to watch over our nation. And, uh, Lord, we thank you for what you have done and for what you are continuing to do. And we just pray, Lord, that we would just see uh, your 
um, that quietness and confidence that comes uh, to a nation that's governed not just by people but by you. Yes. And so, Lord, that's what we ask, that this nation would be a godly nation, a peaceable nation, quietly governed. Lord, we thank you for our government and for those in authority over us. And once again, just pray for your blessing and for your wisdom as they do the things that they need to do and lead this nation in the way it should go. So thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for all the answered prayers we've seen so far. Thank you for your hand upon our nation. Lord, And as has been prayed, Lord, we want to see that physical healing of our land. But Lord, we want to see that spiritual healing of our nation. And for Father, for revival and restoration to come. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sorry, one more. Okay. Yeah. I pray for the as well, God, and uh, they're, they're struggling out there as well. And uh, I pray that uh, you give them, as when they said, restoration, God, and just freedom. And I also pray for the five boys and their families, God, that they're as, as hard as it is to be out there fighting the fires, God. And I pray that you just keep them strength, mm -hmm. and that you give them, um, like, just, just treat them as well, God, that you just help them out, that you provide them with water and as much as what they need, water, food, accommodation, God. And they're out there night and day just fighting for these fires. You know, we've got people from Palestine and Melbourne, people from New South Wales, people from overseas, God, that you know, they're risking their lives for us, God, and they're risking their lives for, for everybody else in East Gippsland, and also in New South Wales as, as well, God. And, that, and they're leaving their families behind, God. I just pray that no matter what happens, that you're always there with them, you're always there giving them the helping hand that they need. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers, and I know you'll continue to pray. Uh, praise the Lord. I think that's all I was going to talk about. Welcome to the Van Remet sitting up there. It's well, good to see you. And if you're visiting or you're here for the first time today, we welcome you. And uh, we're going to come around the table. Lord. We're going to take communion together, and I'll just ask the ushers to begin to distribute those elements. And we welcome you, and we invite you to participate in this communion service is part of our service this morning. While I was um, thinking about communion, um, I just felt the Lord lead me just through a couple of, just a, a thought, a train of thought rather than exact passages or scriptures. But something that I feel like the Lord was saying today, and actually Bill prayed a little bit of it earlier, is um, the word prepare the way came to me and I mean I had a whole lot going on in my head last night and I wasn't sure which direction that the Lord wanted to speak today but back in the book of Isaiah it talks about preparing the way of the Lord and making this, the, the way straight and, and looking forward to the time when Jesus came and then we had John the Baptist echoing that cry and saying prepare the way of the Lord, the Lord's coming prepare the way of the Lord, make the way straight. And then my mind went to Jesus actually speaking to Peter and, and John, I think it was, and saying to them to, to go ahead at the time of Passover and go and prepare a table and prepare the room. And the, there was a room there already prepared for them. That you know, he said, go and find a man, they'll have a jar of water and he'll take you to this room. And there's a room prepared and ready for them to participate in the Lord's Supper and in the Passover feast. And at that feast, Jesus was talking to his disciples about many, many things. But one of the things he said to his disciples at that time was, was that he's going to go ahead of them. And that all of these things were going to happen. And he led them through all the things that were going to happen and how were being fulfilled and all of these things but in John chapter 14 he goes on to tell them that in my father's house are many mansions and if it were not so I would have told you and there's a place prepared for you and there's a place prepared for us and then my mind jumped forward into Revelation that talked about a feast prepared the marriage supper of the Lamb 
Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. The marriage of the Lamb. And his wife has made herself ready. Because to her was granted that she should be arrayed in beautiful white linen. And that linen is the righteousness of saints. And I believe just today, the thoughts that were in my mind was just as, you know, God is into preparing. He was preparing the way for Jesus to come. And Jesus at that last supper was preparing his disciples for the things that was to come. <coughs> were to come. Sorry, wrong. The things that were to come. And he was preparing them and saying, but don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be afraid. It's okay. Because you know what? There's better things coming. And in my father's house is many mountains. And I believe that's what he's saying to us today. But this is a time of preparation. And I just believe here at the start of the year, he's saying to us, he wants us to know, yes, that there's a time and a place prepared for us. <laughs> But he's speaking to us about preparing ourselves for that time, preparing our hearts. And I'll probably end up speaking on this next week because I can feel the message coming on. But he wants us to prepare our hearts. He wants us to plan. He wants us to position ourselves for what he's about to do. And so you may be wondering what these little cards are for. I want you to take this card. We're not going to spend a lot of time to do this today because I know Pete's got an amazing message and I can't wait to hear it. But I want you to take these little cards and just as we spend a moment, I want us to intentionally stop. God wants us to prepare, even just for this year. You know, we talk about preparing for the long term. He is coming back and in my heart and in my in the most being, you know, that time, whether it's tomorrow, 10 years or 100 years or another 1,000 years away, in God's timing, that's not far away. <laughs> we need to be prepared. We need to plan. We need to be positioned and ready for that coming of Christ. But you know what? Jesus wants to come to us, here, now, today. He wants to fulfil his kingdom in our hearts and in our lives, even now. And we pray that prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You know what, we're not waiting for that day, whenever that is, when he's coming back just to fulfil everything. A lot of things are going to be fulfilled that day. But he wants to do things here, now, today, in this time, in this age. This is the age of the church. This is the age of the Holy Spirit. And we're here for a plan and a purpose and a reason. All right? That's the big picture. But today as we come around the table of the Lord, and today as we think about the things that Jesus said and he did, he wants us to prepare, he wants us to position our hearts to receive from him the things that he wants to say. You know, Paul said to his disciples, I receive from the Lord these things that I want to tell you about today. And he went and he taught about this communion service. But I want to say that to you today. Receive from the Lord today the things that he wants to tell you. And he's going to tell you some stuff and he's going to help you position your heart and prepare yourself for the year ahead. And he wants to speak to you. Steve spoke last week about hearing from the Lord. He wants to speak to you. He wants to share his heart with you. He wants you to prayerfully plan and position yourself for the year. So this isn't some little magic thing. It's just a card. But I want you to take the things that the Lord is speaking to you about today as we take communion together. I want you to write them down. Tuck them into your Bible. Stick them up on your mirror at home or somewhere where you can see it. And I want you to refer back to it. Because he doesn't waste his words. He doesn't waste his thoughts. He doesn't waste his time speaking to us. He wants us to hear what he's saying. He wants us to take it into our hearts. 
And then he wants us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And so today as we take communion, I just want us to sit for a moment and listen and hear and position our hearts, position ourselves to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today. And then we can say, Lord, for what we see from the Lord. That which he wants me to say. That which he wants me to do. So let's just bow our heads and just as we hold the biscuit, we want to hold this biscuit. It reminds us Jesus is real. Jesus was flesh and blood and he came word. Emmanuel, God with us. He was flesh and he was blood and he dwelt among us. He's real. He was resurrected and came alive again and went before us to the Father and sent his Holy Spirit to dwell in us. He's real. Let's hold the cup and hold the bread and we're just going to be quiet for a minute and listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. Spirit, we thank you that you come alongside us. You speak to us. You teach us. You guide us. You impart things to us. And you, you bring the word of God alive to us as we read it. Just Even now while I'm just praying, it's like I can, you know, the Holy Spirit's like, over my shoulder and, and as I read his word, he's just reading it with me and just showing it to me and enlightening it to me because that's what he does. And I just want to thank you for that. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, as we do bow our hearts and our thoughts before you, that you do continue to speak to us and show us things that you have to say to us. And may we take it to heart. And be doers of your word. I'm just going to invite someone now. Why don't you stand and just pray and give thanks for the body of Christ. Jesus, we come and we give thanks and honour and praise you and exalt you and we, we're so thankful for what you have done and you have made a transference there and that we are a blessed people because of what you did, that we can receive your blessing. And we thank you for the, your body that was broken for us and for your blood for the cleansing, the healing, for the power of the we receive that with gladness. Thank you. And let's eat together. And who'd like to stand in thanks for the blood?
father, you had to do this. Send your son to die for us, <coughs> to shed his blood, for the remission of our sins, to take away all our sins, past, present, and future. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice. Praise to you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. Lord, we thank you for the victories that you've won for us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that uh, you saw the joy on the other side of the cross. That's what enabled you to go through uh, and endure those uh, things, the tormenting and the hardship and the heartache and the torture, Lord. You went through all that for us because you saw the victory on the other side and the joy on the other side. And thank you for that, Lord Jesus. I think I've just got one word too, and that's a word for someone, maybe many, it's about waiting. And I believe um, someone's been just feeling real heartache and disappointment, that, and they feel that God's forgotten a promise that he's made. But I'm just saying to you from the Holy Spirit, God has not forgotten you, he has not forgotten the promises he has made to you. And I believe the Holy Spirit is saying, embrace the waiting. Embrace the waiting time. Take it as a gift from God. That you might see that it seems like a big long time between the time he gave you the promise and the time he's fulfilling it. But he's saying, embrace that waiting time. Because he's going to teach you things and show you things and, and activate stuff in your life that you wouldn't have had if you didn't have this period of waiting. So, and I believe with my heart that when you turn the that disappointment back on itself and start praising God and thanking Him for that time of waiting and thanking Him and, and honouring Him and praising Him and worshipping Him in that time, you're going to start to see the turnaround and that waiting time will, will come to an end. So I just believe that's a word from the Lord. I got the word expectant waiting. Amen. Amen. Expect. All right, thank you. Uh, someone will receive your cups and we're going to invite. Let's honour our beautiful brother, Keith. As Ooh, he comes yeah. <laughs> Then we see that it is the spirit of man that contacts God. 
For God is a spirit. And only a spirit can contact a spirit. The new birth is a rebirth of the, the human spirit. For Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. John 3 verse 7 says, uh, yeah, John 3 verse 7 says, you must be born again. Nicodemus being natural can only think naturally. So he said, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus answered, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we see with the body, we contact the physical realm. With the spirit, we contact the spiritual realm. And that leaves only one other realm, that man is involved in the mental realm. So with the soul, we contact the intellectual realm. This, of course, is very foundational. So we'll, we'll look into it. We'll, I'll go on further, okay? I would like you to begin thinking of yourself in a new light. Don't think of yourself as just a physical being. Think of yourself as a spirit being who possesses a soul and lives in a body. Amen. Yeah? I'll say it again. Don't think of yourself as just a physical being. Think of yourself as a spirit being who possesses a soul and lives in a body. Let's, let's look at the spirit for a minute. Okay? Yes, man is a spirit who possesses a soul and lives in a body. Man's spirit is that part of him that knows God. He is in the same class or group, grouping or kind or order of species with God because God is a spirit. And God made man to fellowship with him. God made man for his own pleasure. Man is not an animal. How sad and tragic that so many live just like an animal. They have no future, no connection with their spirit. Uh, they just live day to day, food in their mouth, whatever happens, how sad, how tragic. So in order to fellowship with God, man must be the same category uh, with God. Therefore, just as God is spirit, so is man's spirit. Jesus told the woman of the Roman in Samaria, God is a spirit, and they that worship must worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. We cannot know God or touch him physically. He is not a man. He is spirit. He cannot communicate, uh, we cannot communicate with God mentally, for he is a spirit. But we can reach him with our spirit. And it is through our spirit that we come to know God. In 2 Corinthians 4.16 Therefore, it says, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. How about this statement from <coughs> King Hagen? He says, I will never be any older than I am right now. I'm no older now than I was a few years ago. I know more now than I did then, that I'm not any older. My hair may become greyer and I may get a, a few more wrinkles, but the real me will never become old. For the inward man is renewed day by day. Amen. 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 Living in the natural, physical world as we do, it is difficult to realise that the spirit world is far more real than the natural world. You know? yeah. We think of people as existing only in this physical in the physical bodies, and when they are dead, as no longer existing. However, the scripture tells us that the real man is the inward man, the hidden man of the heart, and he is the eternal being. He will live on long after his earthly house has returned to dust. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Let's 
of the soul. As I already said, the soul is the intellect. It is man's senses and will. It is the part of man that reasons and thinks. It deals with the mental realm. <clears throat> In Romans 12, we see <clears throat> that Paul teaches us to do something with our bodies. He says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. <clears throat> In the next verse, Paul goes on to say something about the mind, which is man's intellect, or his will. He said that we are to do something with our mind. Also, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Then we will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Paul was writing here to believers. He was not writing to people of the world. He was writing to born-again, spirit-filled Christians. He told them that they were going to have to do something with their bodies and that they were going to have to do something with their minds. God isn't going to do anything with our body or mind. That's up to us. We contact God with our spirit and our spirit uh, becomes a new man in Christ. Now it's up to us to do something. Uh, Paul said, one, do something with our bodies, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Two, do something with our minds, be transformed by the renewing of our minds. One of the greatest needs of the church today is that God's people renew their minds with the word of God. Amen? someone has received Jesus doesn't say that their mind is renewed. We need the word of God. The mind becomes renewed by the word, reading the word. <clears throat> Faith springing up says the word of God says it, I believe it and I have it now even though I may not uh, see it in the natural. Faith says I have it now not because I can see it but because I actually possess it, but because God promised it. Let's look at the body. Man's spirit is the inward man, that part of him that knows God. The body is the outward man, the physical, the house in which we live. Romans 12 verse 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a little <coughs> sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. An act of worship, offering our bodies to God. Paul said, you, the inward man, present your bodies, the earthly house you live in. We, not God, are the caretaker of that house. We ourselves must present our bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is our spiritual act of worship. There are those who say, well, it doesn't make any difference about the body or what it does. This old body is not going to heaven anyway. It doesn't matter, yeah. But it does make a difference to God what we do with our bodies. He wants us to present our bodies a living sacrifice which is our act of spiritual worship. What are we doing with our bodies? God expects us to have control over our bodies and not to let them dominate us. He does not want us to be body-ruled Christians. He expects us to do as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9.27. No, and this is, this is hard for us to take, no, I beat my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. Bring our bodies 
into subjection to the spirit within us. So there's an offering. What are we doing? How are we preparing for what God has for us in the future? There's a challenge. Now this is the most exciting part. The Holy Spirit inside the inner man. Hallelujah. The part of man's threefold nature that contacts God is the spirit of man. This is the real man. Or as the apostle said, the inward man. The hidden man of the heart. It is the spirit of man that receives eternal life. We will have a new body one day, but we have the new life right now. Yeah. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Yeah. Eternal life is the life and nature of God. It is the God kind of life. John 10.10 10. I am come that they may have life, that they might have it, to the full. So we see that this life of God that comes into our spirits is the nature and life of God which recreates our spirits and makes us new creatures in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the agent that imparts eternal life to us through the Word, and through the Word, conviction leads us to Christ. Then we'll have a witness of the Spirit in our heart that we are a child of God, that we know, that we know, that we know, because the Spirit of God is connected with our spirit. In Romans 8, 16. Although the Holy Spirit plays an important part in our regeneration, there is more to receiving the Holy Spirit than this. After this, the Holy Spirit will come to dwell in us as comfort, helper, and God. When Jesus talked to his disciples about the promise of the Holy Spirit, he said, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him uh, were later to receive. The Spirit of God, the streams of living water, a life within us. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's waiting there to be released. Mm -hmm. Take the cap off. Streams of living water. There's more. There's far more than we, than, than we have. That's the challenge. It's the challenge for the new year. Will you allow the Spirit of God to flow up within you? Yeah? Yeah. The streams of living water to flow out. There's so more to give. Uh, you know, if, if you're around my age, people think, oh, I'm retired. No, 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 no. Come on. Come on. If we're to see a move of God, everyone, take your part. Stand up. Say, yeah, I'm believing for something great. I'm believing for great, great through. I'm going to pursue those things God has put on my heart. Amen? Amen. There is clear evidence in the Word that we can experience a Holy Spirit baptism with the evidence of speaking in tongues. He doesn't come to dwell in our body, he comes to dwell in our spirit. We can, we can begin to see the fulfilment of the scripture. Amen. 1 John 4, 4 says, You, dear children, are from God, and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Amen. Amen. Experiencing this greatness, a greater consciousness of his presence within us, that's what God wants. Amen. Yeah? Amen? Yeah. We have authority in Jesus. We have empowering access to the very heart of God. We can hear what God is wanting to say to us. The Spirit of God is with our spirit. Are we aware God wants us more spirit awareness? God wants to, to move within our midst in a greater way. Man, so coming to, to, to 2020, what do we think, think the Holy Spirit would urge us towards? Maybe, maybe it would be on that little card that you're going to write on. What's the Holy Spirit urging you towards? He wants to see us progress and not be, not be stagnant and stay, and, and stay where we are. I think we 
Paul needed greater sensitivity to the wondrous Holy Spirit that has come to dwell in our spirits. A greater awareness of communication with the Holy Spirit. Do you pray to the Holy Spirit? Do you invite him in? Do you talk to him? Holy Spirit, man, I've been sweating over this message. It's, it's too wordy, but Holy Spirit, you know, bring life to it. Bring life to it. Are, are you asking the Holy Spirit? Are you seeking him? Do you, uh, do you wake up in the morning and say, good morning, dear Father. Good morning, dear Lord Jesus. Good morning, dear Holy Spirit. Lead me and guide me this day. He's promised that streams of living water will, will flow from within. But we pray, God, let it flow in a greater capacity. Father, fill me afresh and new with your spirit. Not just a one-time thing. <coughs> God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want more of you. Yes. Not just a, 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 a prayer, but constantly on our lips. That we'd be coming even to the front and saying, pray for me. I want more of the Holy Spirit. I want more. I want more. I want the infilling. I want to be overflowing. I feel dry. Fill me. Pray, pray for me, pray for me. Ah. Yeah, maybe prayer lines as we earnestly seek God and more of Him, hungering and thirsting after God as we respond to His Word and the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Prayer flooding all around us this year, an agreement together to seek breakthrough. Would you pray with me? I'm having, this, I'm having this issue in my life. Brother, sister, would you pray with me? I want to see a breakthrough in my family. I'm having this issue. Would you pray? Let's join together as we agree together in the Holy Spirit and, and see breakthrough in all kinds of areas, all kinds of issues all around us and in our families. That walls will be broken down, barriers pulled down, that we would see the kingdom of God come in a greater measure. Yeah, that there would be a spiritual dynamic within our midst that has a freshness, an encounter, adventure this year, always expecting the unexpected. Amen? Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit in our midst, working with each person, young and old alike, doing great things, moving within us, us connecting with the living God within us this year. Man, what can happen? Expectation of the, of the, the purposes and plans of God He has for us. He has plans for each and every individual. He loves each of us. He's, you know, before we were even born, He had plans for our life. Let's see fulfilment. Let's reach out to him. Let's, you know, this year, see a real breakthrough mm. and a connection with the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen.
like to, you know, I've been born again, but, you know, what's next? What's more? We can tell you there's amazing strength, power, and encouragement uh, through being filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, and uh, we'd love to pray with you for that today. So we want to come out for prayer. Please come. Um, don't forget uh, the offering for the bushfires. And also there's still plenty of space for people who would like to volunteer to help with our outreach. We've been praying for Moe Heights and all this area for so long. Come on, you gateway people. We've been praying for up that end of town for so long. We've got these outreaches up there to Moe Heights and to, to um, uh, Elizabeth Street and around the place, all happening over January. And uh, you know what? You can be part of that outreach. And um, if you'd like to... Volunteer or know more about it, you can come and see me. There's a sign up sheet at the back if you want to be part of the, um, the days. That it's a Saturday, a Saturday evening or a Wednesday evening over January. Um, the only different one is next week at Churchill, and we'd love to see a whole bunch of people there at Churchill just uh, um, reaching out to the town and blessing them in the name of Jesus. So let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for all that you've said and done uh, here this morning, for the way you've spoken to our hearts. Lord, we pray we would listen to you. We thank you for the vision that you give us. And just like um, was it Habakkuk, you said to take that vision and write it down and make it plain. Lord, we want to hear from you. We want to record that, that you've said. And, and your word says that we want to hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against you. We want to align our hearts with what you've got for us this year. And so, Lord, we ask you to continue to work in our hearts, continue to speak to us. And uh, as we leave this place today, we thank you. Let us be shining lights for you in our community all the time and every day. Jesus, you are the light of the world. But you speak to us and you say, you are the light of the world. And... Jesus, we can only be the light of the world if we've got you, the light of the world, living and shining in us and through us. And so we want you to do that, Lord. And especially this week as we leave this place, may we be just shining like lighthouses for you and taking out with us that love of God, that beautiful love of God and the, the friendship and fellowship of the Holy Spirit as we go and leave this place. In Jesus' name we pray. I mean, good morning.